Well, there are many factors that come into play when buying or selling a home. Sometimes important elements that it can be overlooked. Uh huh. It's best to be aware, thorough, and to work with someone that you can count on. And our next guest is that guy. He's a family man and a realtor you can trust. And his family Look at right that there. Picture. Welcome back, Troy Trum of Keller Williams Realty. Good, Good to see you, see Troy. You, Troy. Yeah, see you. Nice looking family there. Oh, you got two thanks. kids, right? Yep. And one, it's a special day for one of them. Yeah, my little boy Nathaniel's birthday. So oh. we wish him a happy birthday. Yeah. Look right there. Happy birthday, Nathaniel. There, there he is. Go. Oh, cute. Nathaniel's birthday. It's adorable picture. He's got the hat on. I like that. Yeah, I he's a sweet it. little boy. He's always happy and he's so ticklish. Yeah. Beautiful <laughs> family. Well, that is. let's talk about uh, buying and selling homes like we do, you know, every other week. What factors should be considered when choosing a closing date? Um, well, most people base it off of when it's convenient to move, but there are other things to consider. Uh, for example, uh, sooner is usually better because the further out a closing date is, the more opportunity there is for something to go wrong. Uh, for example, the buyer could lose their job and get turned down for a mortgage. Uh, on the flip side is the lender usually needs about 30 days to close a loan. Yeah, these can be complicated and there's steps that you have to follow through. There's, there's something called an earnest deposit. Uh, mm -hmm. How does that work and you know, at what point do you put that down and, and why do you put that down? Well, a buyer will put down an earnest deposit at the time they write the offer to show good faith they're serious about buying the home. Uh, but it also reflects their financial standing. Uh, and then the usually low earnest deposit could indicate that the buyer is short on cash or may run into problems with financing or come into the funds they need mm -hmm. at closing. How well, much do you usually put down on the earnest? I'm sorry. Usually about half to 1% of the purchase price. Okay. Hmm. And then speaking of financing, what should a seller look at concerning a buyer's financing? Well, when receiving an offer, a seller and their agent should look at a couple details uh, concerning the buyer's financing. Uh, first is how much is their down payment? The larger the down payment is, the less likely there will be problems with the financing. Mm -hmm. Next is the type of loan. Uh, VA and FHA loans are slightly more critical of a property's condition and may require repairs that a conventional loan wouldn't. And then uh, last is um, looking at uh, the um, uh, lender that the buyer is using. Yeah. Uh, online lenders and out-of-state lenders should be avoided. They have the worst track record of being able to close a loan. Mm. Uh, from experience, I know which local lenders can be trusted and which have a history of not closing on time. Gotcha. Uh, you know, I'm seeing a lot of a lot of signs going up in yards right now. There's some homes going up. Is that kind of that time of year? The weather's getting nicer. People are putting their homes up. There is a transition period, though, for somebody that wants to sell their home but also purchase another home. So. Uh, when you maybe look at buying a home, there's a transition where you want to make sure that your home gets sold as well. How does that mm -hmm. all tie together and, and you make that work together? Right. Well, a buyer, if they need to sell their current home, will make their offer contingent upon the sale of their current home. And when the seller receives an offer with a home sale contingency, they should ask a few questions. First, is the buyer's home already on the market? Mm -hmm. uh, do they already have a buyer for their home? If they don't, how much time is the buyer asking for in order to get a contract on their home? Um, in a home sale, uh, sale contingency situation, it adds another variable, another uncertainty to the home selling process. Yeah. One way I make this easier and take the stress out of it is I'll guarantee the sale of the buyer's home or I'll buy it myself so both the buyer and seller can move forward with confidence. Yeah. Okay. With those contingencies, are you seeing those move along a little more smoother right now since uh, it, is a, it is a seller's market? Yeah, it does usually go a little bit smoother. Um, a seller, when they receive an offer contingent on the buyer's home selling, they can usually have pretty good confidence that that home will sell. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, let's talk about rental properties. How is buying a rental property built, uh, different than buying a home? Well, buying a property that's rented with a tenant occupying it uh, can pre present a few issues. Uh, first, the buyer needs to be given a copy of the current lease. At closing, the buyer will receive the security deposit the renter put down and any rent that's been paid forward past the closing date. Uh, now, where this can present an issue is the buyer needs to, uh, is obligated to honor the remainder of the lease. But if the buyer was intending to move into the property, that can be a problem. Sometimes be, yeah. a buyer buys a home and they give the tenant notice they need to move out. But the tenant can respond and saying they're not moving because their lease hasn't expired yet. Yeah. The tenant has the right to stay until the end of that lease. That's an interesting situation. So the tenant, yeah, so they can stay in there. If you buy a house that already has a tenant, you're obligated to fulfill that lease. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. So let's talk about the other things that buyers or sellers should watch out in a purchase agreement. Um, well, some things to watch out for are vague contingencies and ambiguous language in a contract. Uh, for example, contingencies that don't have a deadline. Uh, one I frequently see is a purchase agreement is contingent upon the buyer approving of the property disclosure, but doesn't specify by when. Does the buyer have a day to review the disclosure, a week? Without a deadline, the buyer could wait until the day before closing and then back out of the purchase, stating that they're not satisfied with the property disclosure. 
And these type of errors are frequently made by new and part-time agents. You know, this real estate transaction is one of those situations where having an expert providing guidance will save this consumer thousands of dollars and avoid a nightmare of legal issues. Omitting a word in a contract could be very difficult to get around if yes. you sign that thing. And there's That's a lot true. to think about. Troy, tr uh, TrumpTeam.com is a website you can go to. You can give tr Troy a call, 402-884-4848. And it was Nathaniel. It is. Happy yeah. first birthday to Nathaniel. We hope he has a great, <laughs> a beautiful family again. Yeah. So, thanks. Thanks, Troy. Troy. Thanks a lot. Well, it's Friday, June.